everyone. So today we are answering the question, what is a sleep nanny? What is a sleep nanny? What does a sleep nanny do? And I have got the lovely Eileen on with us today and she's going to answer some questions so that you can really get a feel for what a sleep nanny is and what the life of a sleep nanny looks like and what it's like basically to be a sleep nanny consultant and help those sleep deprived families. Um, so hi Eileen, how are you? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Great, good. Yes, great, thank you. Um, so we're going to ask you some questions, Eileen, and um, tell us all about being a sleep nanny. So the first question I've got for you is, what kinds of side effects do you see families suffering with when they're sleep deprived? Okay, so um, it, it really depends on the family that have come to us for support and um, you know, we see a range of different problems that they're identifying um, within the family unit. Um, so things like struggling to function uh, as parents um, trying to get through the day because although the children aren't sleeping, um, the parents are also not getting any sleep so it makes it difficult for them especially if they're trying to balance um, a, a, a work um, situation as well, if there's work involved, if parents are working. Um, so that can be quite tricky. Um, also, um, some families come to me and say, I'm going to divorce my husband if we can't get slept. Um, you know, serial, serious um, marital problems because there's arguments and fallouts because everybody is just so exhausted and it's just really difficult to work together as a team um, without that sleep. So yes, sometimes there's some serious, uh, some serious issues um, around, around that. Um, sometimes, as I said, affecting the, the parents' ability to do a good job. So if they have a job and they have a career um, and they're trying to balance everything, so not being able to do a great job at work because they're so exhausted and it affects your ability to function. Um, many parents can also tell me about how they see their children struggling through the day to cope with everyday activities. So, you know, in the afternoon, if you wanted to take the children to the park or just do something fun as a family, it becomes difficult to expect them to last, um, you know, and to enjoy activities together as a family when they haven't had the sleep that they need and it starts to affect them. And um, so it can start to affect um, daily family life. Um, and, and what the plans are for the day. Um, a family uh, recently that I've been working with actually um, have highlighted um, concerns about eating habits as well because their children were so sleep deprived that they didn't even have the patience to eat and so they'd gone off their food, they were worried about their weight and um, so sometimes there can be an impact on, um, on, on eating habits as well because they're just so tired um, and just generally sometimes families just struggle overall with um, being able to function and there just ends up being a really horrible atmosphere because everybody's so tired and so run down um, and the disruption that comes with sleep deprivation during the day and through the night, um, it just becomes really, really difficult. So, um, so yeah, I think those are probably the, the, the most, the things that stand out the most um, with families that I've worked with so far. And they, yeah, there's, that's, it, it's so true, these side effects that deeply impact the whole family it's not just the child that suffers because they're tired and obviously a child's development and all kinds of other things depend on great sleep but it's those side effects that affect the whole family and I think sometimes people don't even realize that it's it's because of sleep you know and they'll, they'll start to think there's other things wrong with them when actually just exhausted yeah so yeah great yeah. so tell us then Eileen why did you want to become a sleep nanny consultant Okay, so um, I struggled with my own children. I've got twin boys. They're going to be two tomorrow, actually, Valentine's Day babies. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, we had an awful time trying to feel our way um, and work out what they needed at what times. And uh, when they were 18 months, we uh, reached out to um, the sleep nanny company for help. Um, I was trying to balance work and being at home with the boys and um, yeah, they weren't sleeping and it just was impossible to manage as a family situation. Um, so we reached out for help and I became completely overwhelmed by the um, success that we had in training our own children. And actually, it's not rocket science that, you know, the things that we had support with and the things that we were advised to do 
are not difficult. So I, 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 I kind of distanced myself when we came through the process and the boys were sleeping brilliant um, and we'd managed to achieve long-term results. Um, and I thought, this is amazing and I can't believe that I didn't know about this service before the point at which I did. Um, and that I actually went 18 months trying to work things out myself. Um, so I, I, I became, I, I felt quite passionate about it and, and wanted to help other families to get solutions with their sleep challenges because it's a huge problem and there isn't enough support out there um, for for families to to get the solutions that they need to be able to function and to be able to enjoy being a family um, so yeah so I just I felt really passionate about it and trying to um, trying to help other other families out amazing in fact my my own story is very similar and i think when you have that passion um and you you know you just genuinely do want to you've suffered and you want others to not have to suffer because you know it's not necessary um yeah. and you know there is a way so i completely um yeah that that really resonates with my story too um and that's amazing so what does an average day look like for a sleep nanny it was a okay. sneak peek. <laughs> um, so it kind of, for me, it varies from day to day because some days I, I'm working um, as a sleep consultant and then other days I've got my children, so I'm kind of doing a bit of both. Um, but for me, um, a typical day would usually be organise my own children at the beginning of the day. Um, hopefully that they've slept and had a good night <laughs> practising what I preach. Um, then I would usually check in with my clients for an update on what kind of a night they've had. In with their children and and work with them to try and decide when the first nap of the day should be where that's um, where that's relevant um, just to make sure that they're on track and that they feel they feel confident and and prepared for um, for what is coming next in the day for their children in terms of sleep um, and then I would usually take some time to catch up on emails in um, my social media um, blog the paperwork and to catch up on any phone calls um, and then I would again touch base with my clients in the afternoon to see how naps have gone to work with them to make a plan uh, based on what their day was going to look like um, and what bedtime was going to look like and um, so that everybody was confident and everybody was on the same page as to what the expectation is and um, to make sure that everybody's on plan and um, and doing the right things at the right times uh, and then I would organise my own children um, for, for their bed and, um, and in the evenings I usually keep some time aside um, to do video consultations with families that are beginning their programme uh, or for support calls for families that I'm working with if they want to check in and have, um, and have a 15 minute support call then I keep time aside for that um, or if there's any um, free um, phone consultations if anybody's interested in finding it more then I, I leave some time aside for that as well so yeah so that you that's usually how, how my days run sometimes a little bit different on the days that I have the boys and um, my my time uh, isn't really my own but uh, yeah I still kind of try and work to that schedule where I can amazing and great that you have that flexibility and you can say right today the boys need me um, but you can work that time around and I think evenings are great they're an asset to us we we have to grab them don't we when we're when we're mummying sometimes in the daytime and um, and, and that's that's amazing great okay that gives us a really good picture um, and so how does it feel then when you see a family go through a huge transformation okay so it's completely rewarding and um, it's difficult to actually put into words how how great it is and it, because I can relate to how it feels as well and I've gone through the entire process myself so it's completely relatable for me um, to, to empathise um, with what the families are going through. Um, so I feel really proud that I've got the skills to um, be able to help other, other families um, and support, support them through the process um, to a bit to a solution um, and also I feel that it's, it's quite an amazing thing because it's an online based service. I don't often get to meet um, the families that I'm working with. So it's really a relationship based completely on trust. So they're trusting me to tell them the right things to do. And I'm trusting them to um, put everything in motion and to follow my advice 
um, on, on a daily basis and to make sure that things are happening consistently. Um, so for me, it's amazing to, um, to have a family accept my help and to trust my ability in being able to help them. Um, so I think that that's really important, the mutual trust um, is, is quite a big deal. Definitely, definitely. And I know when um, you see a family come back from those things you talked about before, like feeling depressed or low, um, or repairing a, a marriage that was really rocky, and actually they found um, a much better place to be yeah. again. And um, it's definitely lovely when you see that. And, and of course, when the children are sleeping, without question, that's just yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so lovely. When you've been there yourself, like you said, you've been through it. So there's such an empathy there that, um, you know, you just you completely understand that even though what you're telling them might sound simple, you know that actually it's not easy putting it into practice. And um, but you're there and you've you've walked that path already. And that must be really reassuring as well. Um, amazing. And so let's talk about you. How, how has being a sleep nanny changed your life? Okay, so um, up until recently, I was working three days a week as a secondary school music teacher. Um, so I took leave of my job to have the boys um, and then took a year maternity leave. So I returned um, to work in um, January last year. And I completely struggled for the whole year trying to find a balance between um, giving the boys what they needed and being present at work and being able to commit to my responsibilities as a teacher um, and the pressures of having a job and, and raising children it's not easy um, so yeah I find it I find it really difficult so the option to work from home and to work around my boys needs um, has been completely liberating. I, um, I handed in my resignation um, just in November um, so that I could be at home and so that I could work from home. So this is um, a completely new challenge for me, a far cry from what I would be doing in the classroom. Um, but it's amazing and it's, it's a perfect time for um, a fresh challenge. I feel like um, I've been qualified as a teacher for eight years now. So. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's amazing to have something else um, to, to use my brain for and it's not just a case of I've left my job at school um, to be at home and to be you know, hoovering and dusting. I've got something for myself that I'm passionate about, that I'm really interested in and that is a really rewarding job. Um, so yeah, I, do, I think part of me during that process, you know, I was quite determined when I first went back to work and thought, I've worked really hard for this. I've, you know, I've gone to university. I've studied for four years to become a teacher. I've got a profession. I've got a career. You know, I just have to get on with it and make it work. Um, you know, and as and as the months went on, and in spite of the boys sleeping, you know, I was still exhausted because it's a lot. You're trying to juggle a lot, and it's a lot of pressure. Um, so being able to reach a point, kind of um, in the later part of last year, and realizing, do you know what? Actually, there are opportunities to do other things that will suit my life and my family much better than sitting in a classroom three days a week. So um, it's completely, completely changed my life since the beginning of the year. Um, I've been less stressed. Um, my husband tells me that I'm much easier to be around. Um, you know, I think it's, it's quite easy to just get consumed in feeling like you have to do something. Um, so just being able to have that time to kind of take a step back and think, well, do you know what? I actually want to try something new and I think that this would be an amazing opportunity so um so yeah I feel completely liberated and it's, it has actually changed my life so it's been great. Amazing that's such an amazing story I love that and I think you hit the nail on the head there when you said um having something for you because yes you had a career that you at one point loved but we go through seasons in life and you're in a new season now and you obviously weren't getting the fulfillment from it that you used to. Um, you want to be there and be an amazing mum, but you want yeah. something else as well that's, that's yours, that like you say, keeps your brain busy, that it's, you know, you, you can be an amazing mum and you are, you know, you're there for your children, but you do have the other thing as well that makes you, you. Yeah. And I mean, I can tell you for sure, you bring your own unique gifts and skills and personality to yeah. your role and everybody has that you know everybody has something special that they 
uniquely bring. So, um, oh, I love that. That's such a great story. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share with us um, about being a sleep value consultant before we wrap up? I don't think so. I think that's um, that's pretty much covered everything that I wanted to, yeah. to get in there. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's been lovely being able to chat with you and answer some questions. Yes, and you. And thank you so, so much for joining us and for giving this, this you know, completely candid, real life insight, really, into what it's like being a sleep nanny, what a sleep nanny even does. And um, that's, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Thanks so, so much, Eileen. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. Also, if you press the little bell button, you'll have alerts come through when we release new episodes. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.